Hi everyone, this is Trevor here. So today we are going to solve the problem pow x comma n. So before starting off with this problem, if you are loving this placement series, please, please make sure you like this video and along with that you share the series among your friends and juniors. So the problem basically uh, tells you to implement pow x comma n. So what does pow x comma n does? It returns x to the power n. Now you might be given any value of x. It can be an integer, it can be a double you need to return 2 to the power 10 that is this and the value of n can be any integer it cannot exceed the integer that is what the problem states now let's so if you are in an interview and you come across this problem make sure you ask the interviewer can the value of n be negative so if it is negative then you need to take care of some edge cases at first you're gonna tell him the brute force approach that is you'll be looping from 1 to n and you can keep a variable answer and every time you loop, you can multiply x. Now since the answer is double, do declare answer as double. So this is how you can do if n is positive. But what if the value of n is a negative value? Then what are you going to Now you know something, if I write x to the power minus n, that basically means 1 by x to the power n. So our brute force actually finds x to the power n. After this, what you just need to do is you need to divide it by 1 by x to the power n that is nothing but the value of answer but there still lies an edge case now remember when we started the problem it was told that n will be a positive integer or it can be a negative integer it's an integer so if you carefully observe the range of integers it is from minus 21474836488 to something about 647 now, if it is given as negative and you make it as a positive integer, that means if it is given this value and you make it a positive because, because you require 1 by x to the power n. So obviously you will make that n as a positive integer. So the moment you change it to a positive integer, it will overflow because absolute value of this negative integer cannot be stored in an long. integer. Basically, so, uh, this is the edge case you need to take care. Whenever you are converting, uh, you can take a long or a long long that is your wish. So what is the time complexity of this method? It is actually big O of n because you are looping from 1 to n and it's a big O of 1 because you are not using any extra space. The interviewer will ask you to optimize your approach. Assume that uh, you are given to find 2 to the power 10. So you are going to write 2 into 2 to the power 5. Now why can we write this? Because it's 2 to the power 2 and 5 that is what this is and that apparently means 2 to the power 10 now at the next step we can write it as 4 to the power 5 so basically we see something initially our x was our 2 so our x got multiplied with itself and our power got divided by 2 that is it become 5 now at the next step you're gonna find 4 to the power 5 now how can you find 4 to the power 5 to find 4 to the power 5, you write 4 into 4 to the power 4. Basically, you take one of the x outside. Now, you know it's 4 into 4 to the power 4. So, you will try to find out 4 to the power 4, which basically means 4 into 4 to the power 2. Similar to what we discussed over here, because this is 4 to the power square to the power square. That means 4 to the power 4. So, this can be written as 16 to the power square now at the next step we just need to find 16 to the power square which can be written as 16 into 16 to the power 1 so we have got 256 to the power 1 so you write 256 to the power 1 what you are going to do is you're going to write 256 into 256 to the power 0 now you know something that anything to the power 0 will always be 1 so i can write 256 to the power 1 as 256 now we were finding 4 to the power 4 which apparently got us as 256 so we can take this 256 and write it over here which will give us 256 into 4 so 4 to the power 5 can be written as 1024 which will be our ultimate answer for 2 to the power 10. So what did we observe over here? Whenever the power was uh, even, we did multiply the x into x and we divided the 
n by 2 and whenever the n was we multiplied the answer with x and we reduced n by 1 and ultimately whenever our n was 0 we stopped so this is when we get our answer now you might ask me what if n is negative so i have already discussed about this in the brute force approach you can get back to that brute force approach and see what do i do when n is negative time complexity is logarithmic base to n because n is getting divided by 2 whenever it is even and whenever it is odd it is getting reduced by 1 which apparently makes it an even number at the next step so let's uh, discuss the java solution so initially i initialize answer as 1.0 then i will initialize long nn equal to n basically i'm storing a duplicate copy because in our algorithm our n will be destroyed so i check if this is a negative number in that case i make it a positive number that is why i took long because it might have an overflow again if you didn't understand this overflow thing you can get back to the brute force approach and understand this overflow stuff so i keep on iterating unless and until my nn is greater than zero so if the nn is a odd power i multiply x into the answer and i reduce nn by one now if this is an even power then i multiply x with itself and i divide nn by two now after the entire binary exponentiation is complete and nn becomes zero i do a check for the value of n that was given to us so if this was a negative value i know the answer will be one by answer so i do it and after that i will return my answer so now let's uh, talk about the c plus plus solution so i initially initialize answer as 1.0 after that i keep a copy of n to nn because in the algorithm the value of n will get destroyed so if this is a negative value i make it as a positive value so after this i'll continue my algorithm until nn becomes zero if nn is a odd power then our answer gets multiplied with x and our value nn gets reduced by minus 1. Now if it is an even power then x gets multiplied with x itself and nn gets divided by 2. So after this looping is complete I check for the value of n. If it is lesser than 0 that is a negative number I will return 1 by x to the power n that is 1 by answer. I will return it and after this I will return my answer. So if you have understood the entire approach and the edge cases please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel do not forget to subscribe to it along with that if you want to follow me at instagram or if you want to join our telegram group the links are in the description with that i'll wrap up this video let's meet in the next video where i'll be discussing the next problem from the sde sheet